under what circumstances could foreigners move to Mexico? Well, the National Colonization Law of August 18, 1824, was pretty explicit. For starters, foreigners could not live any closer to an international boundary than 60 miles. Secondly, they couldn't live within 30 miles of the coast. Now, this has some pretty practical applications. You don't want foreigners crowding your national borders so that essentially the border of that foreign country is creeping into your territory. And you don't want foreigners on the coast because you don't want little enclaves that can be resupplied by sea or little enclaves of smugglers. All that makes absolutely perfect sense. In exchange, Mexico would not interfere with this immigration until 1840. Then they would re-examine it. Unless there was a problem with one nation or another in terms of who they're sending and if things are kind of getting out of hand. So, essentially, they're agreeing that until 1840, folks can come. Now, there's a couple of other caveats. Uh, preference will be given to Mexican citizens over foreigners. So, if Mexican citizens want to move from the interior of the nation to the frontier, they'll get first crack at the good lands. But, if you can't get your own citizens to go, preference will be given to foreigners that have skills and... Um, something to add to the overall life of Mexico. Uh, above all, though, anybody that comes need to, needed to come packing a certificate of their good character, their Christianity and their good behavior, uh, issued by authorities from the place that they're leaving. So if you're moving here from New York City, for instance, uh, you have to have a certificate saying that you are not riffraff that you're actually a respectable, a respectable person and that you're moving to Mexico under the right circumstances. What happens next? The national colonization law defers to the various states and the various states get to come up with their own set of rules and regulations that then become subordinate to the overarching framework of the national colonization law, but become the actual de facto uh, sort of tactical laws of how people will be practically relocated into Texas. In the state of Coahuila in Texas, uh, each of the households that moves into Texas will be granted a sitio of land. That's 24 labors of pasture, about 4,251 acres, and one labor, about 177 acres of farmland. Overall, total, total, 4,428 acres. That's a big chunk of real estate. Now, notice that they've got grazing lands mixed in with farmland. So it's designed to uh, bring about a balanced agriculture with an emphasis on grazing, because that's what Texas is good for. Colonists will be exempted from taxes for 10 years. In addition, colonists will pay $30 to $35 for the land in $10 increments in years 4, 5, and 6 for a total price of about 12 to 13 cents an acre. This is really cheap dirt. From this state colonization law, the government contracted for up to 2,400 families to come to Texas. And that's not even counting Austin's original colony. So 2,400 American families are now sort of the quota that Mexico's looking for to bring to Texas. So what exactly does an impresario, one of these agents, get out of this arrangement? Well, they have a chance to become absolutely fabulously wealthy if they play their cards right. So an impresario contracts to bring in settlers. The incentives that he's using to help seal the deal, to sell the idea to these settlers, would include the cheap land and the tax exemptions. Now, the impresario is incentivized by being given five issues of each of these parcels per 100 families they bring in. So think about it. 
that's 22,140 acres of rangeland and 855 acres of cropland per impresario, per 100 families. But they first have to get 100 families to agree to come. So until that time, when people actually relocate to Texas, impresarios own nothing. So this is a big gamble on their part, but it's a gamble with a really big payoff at the back end. Impresarios, an individual impresario, will be limited to 800 families. That's it. So you can do this deal eight times, but you still have the potential for racking up 184,000 acres of Texas. In exchange for this great deal, impresarios are responsible for a number of things themselves. For instance, their colonies need to observe the boundaries, so you can't just sort of spill over into your neighbor's colony. In addition, you have a six-year window of opportunity to bring in the number of people that you contracted to bring in. Otherwise, the whole deal is off and everything is forfeit. Uh, another issue is you can only bring in Catholics and people of good moral character. That makes sense. How easy will it be to enforce this uh, Catholic requirement? No, that remains to be seen. Uh, you also cannot import criminals. And once you have your colony set up, you must organize a militia for the general defense. Really, this is a way for Mexico to have an Indian policy in Texas without having to pay for it out of the uh, federal funds. Uh, whenever you get your 100 families into Texas, then you notify the government and the land will be distributed and titles will be issued. All of these titles and all business with the government must be conducted in Spanish. <laughs>